Madison and today I'm here with a new video. Now, I'm sorry I haven't been able to um, record and upload videos daily. Um, like I said, school has started and it's been a pain in the butt, let me tell you. But um, today, thank god I'm here with um, a new video for you guys. And today I'll be telling you um, 11 healthy ways to deal with stress and anxiety. So yeah, that's good thing you could do is blow on your thumb. I know it sounds weird and really basic, but your thumb has like a pressure point. It really help. It relaxes you, relaxes your muscles and your brain activity. So yeah, like just blowing on your thumb. The blowing. Second way is to do your best that you can. Um, do the best you can. Um, don't always aim for first place. Okay, don't always aim for second place. It's good. It's healthy to you know have your goals set to second or third but don't always aim for the highest because if you're not able to get the highest um you're just gonna let yourself down instead aim for a pretty fair um like second or third place if you're like competing for something yeah for second or third place and if you get higher well then that's great that i'm higher your self-esteem if you get that then you know you've accomplished your goal and if you get lower then you know to practice or to do better for the next time Third way is to get enough sleep. Now, enough, I'm pretty sure your friends tell you this all the time. You know, go to sleep at 8, wake up at 6. Um, but it's healthy, a healthy amount of um, uh, hours of sleep just really depends on age. But um, it's usually a good amount of sleep at um, 8 to 10 hours. If you can't get 8 to 10 hours, um, naps are always good. Let's say you sleep for three hours, try to take um, maybe an hour nap. If you can't, like you're at school or something, when you get home, take a nap or, you know, stuff like that. Four is limit alcohol and caffeine. Don't, you, you don't, it's not good for you and it's not healthy for you physically or mentally either because the caffeine, like, what caffeine does is it's basically a whole bunch of sugar and that'll keep you like on like hyper and you know really energized for let's say two hours but then once those two hours you're gonna be lower energized than you were before you took the caffeine or the alcohol and it's just not good for your brain. Fifth way is to welcome humor. It's always good to have a laugh here and there. Um, they say it, if you laugh at least seven times, seven, seven or seven times, 17 times a day. I don't remember, but um, a, a certain time of the day is healthy for you, for you mentally. So. Sixth thing is learn your trigger points. Learn what triggers your anxiety. What triggers my anxiety is being in a situation where I'm giving all these tasks, like do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that, or like giving all these things to take care of, and it just, I don't know, but it, yeah, that's my trigger point, so I try to avoid that as much as I can, and it's really helpful. The seventh thing you could do is maintain a positive attitude. It's always good to look on the brighter side. The cup is not half empty, it's half full. Um, but anyways, that, um, it's always good to keep a positive attitude. Try to think on the brighter side. Try not to put yourself down a lot because that, could, that won't help your stress at all. That'll just make it worse. Number eight is accept the fact that you cannot control everything. You can't, you can't, you can't rotate the earth. You can't make this person like you. You can't make this person hate you. You can't always do a lot of things. And sometimes people don't accept that. And it makes them stressed out. But you just need to tell yourself, I can't control it. It's not in my control, not in my power. It's, I can't do anything to change it. Ninth way is a trick someone taught me a long time ago. It's called the four breath or four square or square breath, square breathing. I don't know, something like that. What you do is you breathe in for four seconds, hold it in for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and wait four seconds, and then do it all over again. Breathe in for four seconds, hold it in for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds. And wait for four seconds and this is what it your um, pulse and um, your heart rate and your brain activity a little bit to where it, it calms you down a little bit just, just calms you down 
tenth way to help with stress is to take a time out. Give yourself a time out. I know it sounds weird, but if you feel you're stressing out, your anxiety is popping back up again, <laughs> just stop what you're doing. Say, if you're helping your mom or something, say, hold on, mom, let me go take a break real quick. Go into your room, go somewhere quiet. If you need to, go somewhere dark too. I find that helps a lot. And just close your eyes and focus on your breathing. Do the four breath thing. And give yourself like a little time out for, you know, maybe a minute or two. And then you'll be good. You'll be, you'll be good. Don't be. Now the 11th and last way um, I have for you guys today is get a stress ball. Or like a stress twist, something to squeeze. I couldn't find one, the one that I had. It was like a little Santa Claus thing. But um, um, get one that will really help if you carry around with your backpack or your purse or something. If you feel like you're stressing out, just squeeze it. It'll help take out your temper. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't know. But your, it'll help a lot. It'll calm you down. Yeah. So yeah. Um... Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and comment what videos you'd like me to do next. And I will work on them. Like I said, I'm also working on that morning routine. The mornings have been crazy right now because of school. But I will get to them. So, got you guys. Got you. Anyways, bye. Thanks for watching.